we wanted to see what, you know, if in fact the Beatles had sort of proliferated throughout, throughout our region. And uh, Blake at the time was a senior at App State in sustainable development. He was like, hey, can I do an internship with you guys? And internships are funny because it's like, okay, I want to find something that's worth his time and my time and something that can be productive. And uh, Paige Patterson, our horticulture agent who isn't here uh, today, we sort of brainstormed and we're like, you know what? Let's put, let's put all the Dick's chatter to the test. Let's see if these things really are everywhere. So I'll introduce Blake in that, in that context, and he's going to talk about uh, what, we did, what we did last fall. Yeah, so it's good to see everyone here. It's, it's a great day for this. Again, like Jim said, uh, last fall I was an internship here in Watauga um, for Watauga County Extension. I'm now currently in Ashe County as a program assistant, um, where I'm very happy. So, uh, but like Jim was saying, um, every internship he does, he wants there to be a productive research-based project that comes out of it just to sh exemplify some of our skills and provide a service in a sense. Um, so, of course, you know, I came into his office and I was like, hey, can I be an intern? You know, I had known Jim from Soils and, you know, had stayed in touch with him. And it was, you know, Jim's like, absolutely, but um, I want you to do a project. And I was like, well, what kind of project? And we talked about it for a while, and he's like, well, let's show off some of the GIS skills you have and things of that nature. Um, and we still kicked around ideas and stuff. And then, you know, Paige actually suggested, hey, let's see if we can get him to work with Laracobius. And I was like, what's Laracobius? <laughs> um, I think this was about in August. And of course, you know, I came into the situation knowing nothing about Laracobius nigrinus or, you know, any of um, Dr. McDonald's work prior to this. Um, but uh, that, that's kind of the whirlwind that I got introduced to um, his work in the high country. And again, um, my real skill set I was trying to exemplify in this is my GIS work. And... You know, one thing that Dr. McDonald hadn't done a lot of is documenting where he had documented where he was releasing beetles, but not where, you know, in a, in a logical sense of online format. Um, and so that's one thing that I wanted to do was be able to take all of his release data and show them on the map and kind of um, be able to go from there. And so in researching and all this kind of stuff, I came across a study done in 2012 with Virginia Tech that basically said, hey, you know, um, Laracobius nigrinus' rate of spread should be about 39 meters a year or 400 meters after five years, you know. So there's a little bit of vari variability in there. And I was like, well, that's something great. We can take all these release data information and, you know, I can create buffers and we can kind of see where the ideal spread of this thing should be. And so let's just get into this a little bit. So, um, you know, Dr. McDonald was able to give us his release data over the past, you know, from 2005 to 2010 here in the high country. And, you know, we were specifically just looking at Watauga County. But of course, this is Watauga County and these blue dots all around are um, Dick's release sites. And so there's a lot of release sites um, throughout the county. Then what we were able to do with that is go create buffers on the rate of spread according to the Virginia Tech study. And so initially when me and Jim were looking at this map here, we were kind of like, okay, um, that's not very big. Um, because, you know, ideally, according to all the book work, you know, we shouldn't be seeing Laracobius in any of these spots. And so from that kind of data, we were able to sit there and say, well, you know, any kind of sampling and survey that we do um, is going to be a great show. It's going to show presence um, in a really good manner. So what we decided to do was just convenience sampling. And we sent out a survey to the community to kind of get permission from private landowners and things of that nature. So we could also check woodlots, um, private woodlots, and also um, state right-of-ways. And so, you know, one of our sampling procedures was we were only sampling trees that had one meter infestation of Hemoquilae adelgid. And we were mainly just jumping in the truck, rolling through uh, state-maintained roads and back roads and things like that. And we'd say, oh, 
there's hemlocks right there. Let's go check those and get out of the truck and go sample those. Um, and so this was about a three day period that it took us to do this. And of the 42 locations we were able to survey, 36 were able, we found to have Laracobius nigrinus around. And the caveat to that too is some of those locations, I believe four um, that we didn't find it, we walked, you know, five, 10 feet away to another hemlock and were able to find Laracobius there. So while, you know, there is a six spots that we didn't find it, it was still within a relatively um, close area, proximity. And so that is what we were able to find. And all the red dots, of course, are surveyed locations where we were able to find Laracobius nigrinus. And from that map alone, you know, we were pretty confident in saying from an extension standpoint, yeah, Laracobius is in Watauga County, um, pretty well distributed too. But I kind of wanted it to take, take it a step farther because obviously from that map there, it has way blown out what the predicted rate of spread is um, by miles in some cases. So what I was able to do with the GIS program is find nearest points. Um, it's a tool that you can actually use. And um, I kind of wanted to use that tool so we could make sense of like where, what it does is it measures the closest point to a release area. So what that says is, you know, hypothetically, that is the best place that those beetles were probably coming from, from those release sites. And so that's what this looks like. Um, we got our connecting lines. And so what that map shows is those beetles where we were finding them were from these um, release sites. And the other thing that that tool does is it measures straight line distance between those points. And so we were able to measure the straight line distance and because of Dr. McDonald's um, good documentation, um, we knew what years he was releasing them. So of course, um, you know, 2021 minus whatever year he released it, we had how many years of establishment divided by, or um, and then our straight line distance divided by that number gives us a rate of spread. And so we were able to do that for each individual point and then average it across the survey sample. And what we found is on average for all those points, the rate of spread was 236 meters. Um, that's just the average. And that's pretty significant because that's 600% greater than what was already previously documented by the 2012 study. And so when I saw that number, I was like, well, what, what's the furthest point we had? What's the extreme of that? So the furthest point we got from a release location was 10,250 meters away. And once you, do the once you do the rate of spread of that, it was 854 meters per year in order for that beetle to get from a release location to where we found it, which is 2,200% greater than the Virginia Tech study, which is very significant. Um, and so, you know, this data not only vindicates that um, the high country is very much um, covered in Laracobius nigrinus, but it also kind of shows that Laracobius nigrinus might be a better biological predator than what was previously documented um, by Virginia Tech and other institutions working on it. Um, so the potential for this predator beetle to be able to biologically control areas, um, large tracts of lands, you know, it, it makes a whole lot more sense to use these beetles for large tracts of lands is what we found from the data. Um, but of course, you know, there's always a caveat to that. Um, while, you know, it's a predator beetle and in order to have a predator beetle, you have to have that's food source. You can't have one and not the other. So of course, the hemlocks you're gonna see um, with Laracobius are still gonna show signs of infection. And signs of infection are also gonna include some damage and residues. However, you know, those trees in native and in ornamental settings are gonna survive. Um, they're gonna be taken care of by Laracobius, but they are gonna show some signs of damage and stuff like that. 
So truthfully, it comes down to the landowner's own decisions on how to treat their hemlocks. If they want that pristine hemlock, you know, Laracobius is going to keep them alive, but they're not going to be pristine. Um, and, but for large tracts of land, um, Laracobius makes sense because it spreads a whole lot faster than what was previously mentioned. Yes, ma'am. So how does it spread? So I, I think it does a little bit of both. I think it rides winds. I think it flies on its own. Um, that, that's another kind of interesting kind of point to research about. <laughs>